Me, me. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Meet Me Nation. We are joined today by uh, the guys from the Rivalry Podcast. If you remember uh, a few months ago, uh, we were on there, and they've been huge supporters of Meet Me Nation ever since it started. And uh, like we said, they're like Michigan and Ohio State fans, so they're uh, they're up there with the big boys. So we're really, really glad to you know kind of be having them on on board and, and having them as fans, David. Nice to have you on board as well. I know you guys have a tournament coming up in Florida uh, this week, next week, you said, right? Yeah, uh, we leave tomorrow, which would be, I guess, Friday the 26th. Tournament's the 28th and 29th. Nice, nice. Yeah, good to have you on board. Uh, JP, Josh, how are you guys doing? Not too bad. Uh, I'd be better if uh, we had a head football coach right now. But, you know, <laughs> other than that, you do. Other than that, doing okay. <laughs> yeah, so JP, you're the Ohio State guy, and Josh, you're the Michigan guy, right? Yeah, yeah, you got it. And we're <laughs> we're, we're uh, and we're based out of Columbus as well, which you know makes for an interesting dynamic on on my end. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Columbus for seven years now, and it's uh, it's been a lot more fun in recent years. Nice. Are you guys <laughs> both alum from each of your schools, or no? We both yeah. went to uh, different, but uh, like small, like liberal art uh, Christian schools in Ohio, and then nice. we both work for a station called The River, based out of Columbus, faith-based radio station. Uh, he does social. I do uh, afternoon show and production, and then we do uh, the rivalry uh, on the side. But it's part of that part of the uh, radio station's network, so we get to do it on the clock, which is also a blast for us. Nice. Yeah. If you guys haven't listened to the rivalry or, or watched your stuff on Twitter, like they're super high production value, really, really good content. Um, I guess just to get started, like how did the rivalry pod start? Yeah. So I can, I can take that one. So I, um, I started it with a, a buddy of mine six years ago now. Um, and again, uh, one of our sales guys at the radio station had come to me. I was his third choice, which is a little bit hurtful, but it's fine. <laughs> uh, he doesn't work. He doesn't work there anymore. So uh, suck it. Um, but yeah, so we we uh, we started it, and it was basically kind of googling. You know, this would have been 2018. Like, how do you start a podcast? Like, we just really didn't have any idea what we were doing. Um, but he he was an Ohio State. I mean, still is, but he an Ohio State grad, uh, and I grew up in Michigan. So it felt like okay. Well, this is a being in Columbus. This is a really natural place for um, for us to to reach out and to, to try to branch into. So start by just trying stuff, recording episodes, and then uh, fast forward to now and JP and I have been doing it for the last couple of years. And, you know, we've got this really nice podcast studio we can use now and YouTube offerings. And, you know, it's just been, um, it's just grown so much. We've been, uh, we're credentialed with Ohio state media, which again is super weird for me. Um, but we've, <laughs> we've just, it's, it's afforded a lot of really good opportunities. And so it, it's fun to have seen, you know, six years of hard work pay off. And it feels like every year we kind of up the ante a little bit more. Um, and just trying to, you know, more, more than anything, you know, we don't really care about, uh, you know, us getting bigger per se, as much as we just, we love college football. We want to bring that emotion, you know, mm -hmm. that, that, I mean, that, that's why we love college athletics, you know, as much as I, uh, you know, enjoy the NFL, shout out to the lions. Uh, it, it doesn't have that same emotion that college athletics does. Like that's why we fall in love with it. And so any chance we get to go to games and create content that brings that emotion, that atmosphere to people's living rooms or their cars or whatever, yeah. um, you know, that's, that's what, what gets us excited. Nice. Nice. David, did you want to uh, take the next question or we'll just roll it? <clears throat> yeah, I guess kind of my only thing is being kind of y'all are both one of y'all's Ohio state, one of y'all's Michigan, I guess us being a mid major, we don't, fully get that college game day experience like you see on ESPN and stuff like that. So I guess kind of what's it, what's it like at an Ohio State or a Michigan game on a game day? JP, I'll let you take that one being, yeah, it uh, is. being home. Yeah, it's, it's an experience. I honestly, I've grown up an Ohio State fan. I was born and raised in Ohio. It is, it sounds weird to say, but it really is something you're taught at a young age here. I mean, college football is just built different in Ohio, especially when you're close to Columbus. And so I had never actually been to an Ohio State game um, in person until I started doing the podcast. And we went to, I think my first game ever was the night game last two, two years ago, no, last year, two years ago. Is that ago. Wisconsin? Yeah, yeah at, it was yeah. Wisconsin at home under the lights, all black unis. And they just got, I mean, Ohio State smoked them. It was, mm. 
like 30 something nothing at half i mean it was just a, a slaughtering but the energy i mean we get very lucky that we get credentials that allow us to be on the field for all of pregame up until the final 10 minutes and then the entirety of the fourth quarter and being down there when the the sun's going down and the lights are coming on and you're there for the whole experience that place is getting packed because at the time i don't remember if it was a top 10 matchup but it was a ranked matchup against both teams and the energy was just insane and so being a part of that is is something that you just have to experience and then being there for the game is you think that you've seen it all and then you go for a matchup like i did i think it was when we were number one and number first number two or something like that um cj shroud's final year and you go to an environment like that with ohio state having lost the year prior and and coming back into that stadium with a lot of hope and a lot of people thinking they were going to get it done and it being a close game uh them getting a touchdown the first drive i mean you just felt like that place was ready to erupt um mm -hmm. and so there's just nothing like it i mean we've been super lucky to be able to go to some of the greatest ohio state football games in history in my mind we were at the um, Peach Bowl where they missed the field goal against Georgia, which was crushing um, this past season. We were, well, the season before we were at Penn State where Ohio mm -hmm. State was down and then they ended up blowing them out at the end. Um, but being in a packed Beaver Stadium was just an insane feeling. Then we were lucky to be able to go to South Bend, Indiana last year and be a part of that Notre Dame game. And we were, 10 feet from where Chip trained him, scored the, the game winning touchdown with a second left. And there's video that we posted on our Twitter where you can see me recording. And the second they score, I just lost it. And I apologize to Jace thousands of times on the drive home. Like, I'm sorry I messed that shot up, man. Like, I, I was, I was scoring. sorry too. I you was upset about scoring, it. And I just, I just lose it. Me and the guy next to me were the only Buckeye fans on the field and we were just going crazy. So, <laughs> That's it, so it, awesome. It, it's an experience, man. That's so cool. So when it comes to like on-field access, you mentioned Ohio State. Um, were you guys able to secure like any Michigan State on-field access or? Yeah. So that's been that's been a. So we've <clears throat> let me back up. So we we've, we've done Ohio State credentials for um, for three seasons now. Uh, Michigan has been a lot tougher to get a hold of, and and it's understandable, right? Like you're you know. One, as a podcast, you got to prove you're not just two guys in, you know, your mama's basement, you know, like you have some, you know, and so being, being connected to, you know, a large market radio station in Columbus is really helpful. But then the second piece of it for Michigan is you're part of a radio network in Columbus. Why in the world are you wanting to come up to Michigan? Yeah. Um, and so this year, like one of the things that I, you know, I, I am really proud of is, is the work we put into kind of to send those emails to kind of back up, you know, provide evidence of, Hey, this is what we do to kind of reach out again. You know, some of that back and forth behind the scenes work, you know, it, it's easy to look at and you guys get this too. Right. Of like, Oh, you guys are, are at such and such. That's so cool. And you know, it's like, well, we're not, we're not just hanging out. Uh, <laughs> you know, there's, there's work going on. It took work yeah. to get there. Um, so all that to say, yeah, this year was the first year we got uh, credentialed for anything with Michigan. So we went up to the Bowling Green game early early in the season. Um, we were able to go up. Well, we someone on this podcast chickened out because they were so afraid yeah. of going up to Ann Arbor. <laughs> yeah. um, but we were both credentialed to go to the game. So I, I went up there for the game and then uh, had a nice little back and forth with the Big Ten and, and went to the Big Ten championship as well. So yeah. it's it's been fun to, especially for me, right? Like as that that's my team. Um, you know, the, the atmosphere in Columbus is fun just as a football fan. But to actually get to go see your team, um, especially in big games, has been has been cool. So I'm I'm hopeful that that relationship continues uh, into this next season. You know, now we're on email lists and you know stuff like that that you just you try to show up and say yes to as much as you can, mm -hmm. and uh, you know just be be humble and be grateful and and work hard to make sure that it's worth your while and and that it pays off for them too to have you there. Nice, yeah, no, that that's huge. I mean, for us, you know, starting our podcast recently. I mean, Meet Me Nation. We've been on. For a while, we started out as like UTSA memes back in 2013, and uh, a big reason why we even started the podcast was to sort of get that credentialing because yeah. we wanted to have more of that on-field experience and share that with people. And uh, we've still been kind of wrestling with it. Caleb definitely knows all about it. Like, obviously, 
I think when you're even if you're a big meme page, you've got a lot of followers, like we've got 20,000 followers on Facebook. Yeah, it's man. still something where like when you actually talk to the administration, like they want to know, like you said, that you're not just some people in your mom's basement, you yeah. know, yeah. Uh, posting stuff like crap talk. Like they want to know you're actually kind of official. So totally makes sense. Um, yeah. What's y'all's journey been so far with the robbery pod? Like when you guys started to where you all where you're at now, how's that growth process been? Yeah. I mean, I, I think, I think it's just been, I, I think especially early on, like I said, a lot of it was with uh, <clears throat> Mitchell, my co-host that I started it with. A lot of it was just being willing to go, Hey, like we've got a passion for this. Like, let's just try crap. Yeah. And so, you know, it was recording episodes and, you know, not really, you know, we didn't really have much of an idea on like, Oh, like your intro should be short or, you know, right. this is how long your episode should be. This is how people typically consume it. It was, a couple of radio guys just going, well, I don't know, let's just tr try something. Yeah. Um, you know, <clears throat> where at, at this, you know, we just had the audio side and, and that was pretty much it. We didn't really know how to distribute it. Whereas, you know, now at this point and, you know, not only is JP really good as a, you know, someone to, to banter back and forth with, we've both done on air positions at various times. Like we know how to do that stuff. But I mean, as a social media guy, like that's that's kind of the other side of his job, mm -hmm. like has been super helpful with, OK, well, what if we you know, distribute the, the podcast this way, um, being able to have a, a studio at the station that we can use to be able to have video elements and uh, a producer who's able to cut that stuff up and turn it into Instagram reels and TikToks and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Like it's just been that it, it feels like it's been, you know, and I kind of go back to this. You know, it, it is. It's easy to look at and go like, "Oh man, you guys are at such and such." Like, yeah. Well, we started off not having a clue what we were doing, and you just you just ask and you knock and you seek. You just try stuff, mm -hmm. um, and you find out what works. And you find out what doesn't. And uh, you know, last year was the first year we kind of sat down and went, "I I wonder if we could go to like an away game," and sure enough, you can. Oh, yeah. that's neat. Hey, I wonder. I wonder if we kept uh, asking Michigan enough times and providing evidence. I wonder if they'd say yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So now this next year, you know, we're kind of looking at it, going, well, "All right, well, we've got you know, Ohio State home games are probably going to be a given, but they go out to Oregon. Could we could we make a West Coast trip? Is that mm -hmm. like do we have a budget for that? Mm -hmm. um, you know, Michigan's got uh, just a heck of a schedule this coming year. Um, but mm -hmm. you know, they they play Texas in week two. Okay, well, could, could we go up there for tech? You know, so it's just it's just kind of at us being willing to ask both ourselves and you know the powers that be and go, hey, what if we what if we tried this? Mm -hmm. And I feel like every time we go, JP would probably back us up. I feel like every time we go, like we from Penn State as the first road trip to football playoff to you know mm -hmm. to all this different stuff. I feel like every time we learn something, it's like oh, okay. We could do that a little bit differently next time. Oh, we could we could do that better. Oh, this is what people they people don't care about this, but what they really want is you know. And so at, at the end of the day, like my big thing has always been from the day we started it. Once it stops being fun, I'm done. Like I, I just mm -hmm. like we both love the sport, and you you know you guys get it. Obviously, we love the sport so much that the second that it becomes this is just another thing to do. Because it, you know, it can like, hey, you get to go to X Y Z. Well, that's a lot of travel on the weekends. That's mm -hmm. a lot of extra work at our, you know, the a other actual parts of our jobs or for our families and all that. It's like th the second that that becomes like, I, I kind of just like to sit down and just watch some football today. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's like, okay, we're done, we're done, we're missing it. So I don't know if that answers your question, Jeremy, but that's that's probably the best answer I could give for that. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, yeah, it kind of goes into my next question: is um, where do you guys see? the robbery pod headed long-term, obviously, I mean, you want to enjoy what you're doing and, and it definitely seems like a passion project. Um, and if that's something that you continue to enjoy doing, where do you guys see it in the next, you know, a couple of years, five years, 10 years, even, um, do you see like doing things differently at all or continually doing the same thing you're doing so far? JP, yeah, you want to take it? Yeah, I, I think so. Um, <clears throat> We, we actually just kind of had a meeting kind of planning not that far out, but at least next season. Um, and I think right now, this season, this past season, at least, we saw just an insane amount of growth overall, especially on video stuff. Mm. And so I think in the next couple of years, we've already made some adjustments. Like net, we've learned from going to games now. Normally we get that field access and then both of us are up in the press box. And we thought, well, 
it's probably more beneficial for one of us to be on field, like the Michigan Bowling Green game. I was on field the entire game. And so we actually got to put together a really, really cool highlight from that trip. You can see it on our YouTube channel. Um, and that's kind of our goal this year is moving forward. I'll be the person down on the field the entirety of the game as a photographer, videographer, grabbing footage from pregame throughout the entire game, getting clips so that we can do little recap videos um, while Jace is upstairs in the press box tweeting about the game, covering it from that angle. And so I think that's one of the most basic things I think we would both like to see moving forward. And then um, we have different trips and things like this next year. I think we both have a lot of high hopes. Like Jay said, we've got that Michigan connection. Now there are a couple circumstances next season where both teams have big games on the same weekend. And I think it would be really awesome if our socials could represent that. So Jace going to a Michigan game, covering that as a press person. Um, and then me being at Ohio state at the horseshoe credentialed on the field, being able to provide that. So if you're following us on socials, you're seeing both angles behind the scenes stuff. Um, so I guess short term for just five years, I think I'd like to continue to see our numbers go up um, on YouTube, at least. I think we really found a good rhythm and a good flow this year um, just with our content. And we, we were able to gain some traction, whether it's good or bad. We had way more engagement on comments, whether they were calling us idiots or whatever, they were still commenting. <laughs> um, we had plenty of stuff like that, but just the banter that we were able to have back and forth, I think going into next year, that's something we want to continue to improve on. Um, and then we just launched our actual like Instagram this past season. And I think figuring out ways to really utilize that throughout the week. And then when it's not game day, because like Jason had already said, during game day, it's super easy because we're on the field. I can go up to Marvin Harrison Jr. and take as many videos as I could, and it would suffice. Yeah. And so, um, but doing stuff which one is he and figuring out uh probably who the chargers are going to trade up for so don't you ever yeah. don't you ever <laughs> and so having stuff like that that content kind of preloaded and a plan for stuff moving forward i think is is the plan is more so we have a good grounding of what we want but just getting it more set in stone concrete more of a routine yeah and i i think i think i'd add the only thing i'd add to that is you know <clears throat> one of the the big benefits for us right now is being connect, you know, being a part of the podcasting arm of of this radio mm -hmm. station um, of the river. And one of the things that we're looking at uh, that specifically I've tasked myself with in the first quarter of this year is to see, okay, what does it look like to still be under that umbrella because that has huge benefit for us both from an audience standpoint, um, from a financial standpoint. Like, there's a lot of good reasons for that. Mm -hmm. But also, what does it look like to be more independent while still under that umbrella so that we can, you know, maybe there's a station in Ann Arbor that would like to, you know, have our, you know, let our stuff live on their website as well. Um, yeah. Maybe there's a, you know, uh, I th think it's called the Valiant Network or something, you know, uh, college football podcast, you know, network. Is there something that we can be, can we be part of that? And again, that's, that's kind of always the struggle on my end is being in columbus we get a lot of ohio state stuff which is awesome but how do we represent really well that this is not just that but how do we represent the the rivalry in a really balanced way and yeah. so that's and again we might we might try that and find yeah there's not really a good fit or it doesn't make sense yeah. but even even little things like that that i think would help to legitimize moving forward give us more opportunities put us in front of more eyes and ears again not so that we can you know have a hundred thousand followers, but just so more people can enjoy the game in more ways. Like that's really the point. Yeah. So I guess where I'm at is, so the Michigan Ohio state rivalry is one of, if not the biggest rivalries in college football. <clears throat> so with one of y'all, with y'all having such a split audience, what kind of engagement do y'all get between Michigan fans and Ohio state fans? And is it like one's hating on one and one's hating on the other? Or is it y'all get really good kind of back <laughs> on social media? <laughs> We get, we do not, it is exactly what you would think it is. There is never, it, it is very rare if we get a comment from another fan base that it is a positive thing. Like it is, <laughs> it is if, if somebody says anything, I mean, if you go and look, I think our most popular video episode right now is when the Connor Stallion stuff broke 
and mm-hmm. it is just a dumpster fire comment section, man. Of it's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. We, we were texting each other the whole day because it's like Michigan people are coming after me, saying stuff that I didn't even say. They're Ohio State people are going after Jace, saying stuff, putting asterisks with everything. I mean, it is just there is there's a ton of respect, but there is no love in that in that rivalry. It is. <laughs> I think I think maybe. The t- this whole season, I maybe saw one or two people that were like rational. Yeah, Michigan's yeah. A darn good football team. Come, yeah. everything else is like they're cheaters, scum. <laughs> Get them, torches and pitchfork mentality for sure. I literally, I literally told you today. You walked in my office. I don't even remember what you were in there for. Um, which this is here's the bad. Th- here's what happens yeah. is that he'll come into my office for like actual like work things about our day jobs, and it immediately becomes, hey, did you see this comment on Twitter? Um, this is an, an issue. Um, but I literally told you today um, that I have had to stop checking the rivalry Twitter as much because we follow like all these multiple accounts for both sides. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I cannot see one more Woody Hayes underscore 614 underscore go bucks forever comment <laughs> about Jim Harbour. Like, I just, I can't do it anymore. Yeah. I'm, because like, we, we're both passionate, but like we're both pretty rational fans mm-hmm. at the mm-hmm. same time. And I just, I don't know if you've been on social media before, but it is a hot dumpster fire of oh, illogical, illogical, just like stupidity. I'm like, I can't yeah. do this anymore because yeah. I've tried for so long to like logic. And I'm like, well, if, <laughs> if, you know, if Michigan beats Ohio state for a third time, and then wins the national championship, then someone will give us credit. Absolutely not. Of course, it, no. does, it does not matter. Uh, it's so just I, like, I have uh, to set my standards. <laughs> it's just like us with Texas State. We beat them, exactly. I think, the last five times we've played them. But every time the game comes up, there is – it is like you said, it's a dumpster <laughs> fire on social media mm-hmm. when it comes to the two fan bases arguing. Because it's I, like – look at it rationally. Texas, Texas State has not beaten us yet. And so it's just like rationally we're better, but <laughs> nobody wants to look at it. <laughs> I, I will say that after you know we connected with you guys back at, you know early in the fall, my mm-hmm. my hatred level for Texas State has gone way up, and I have never yep. thought about that program <laughs> in my life. But I like I hate them so Burn much. It to the ground. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Texas is so interesting because it's like UTSA. I mean, we played them what five six times now, and mm-hmm. it's it's sort of a weird rivalry because like we get a lot of sponsors. HEB they're sort of like the Walmart of Texas. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. They were sponsoring a lot of the rivalries initially, and mm-hmm. it got to a point where it's like, okay, if you beat them five times in a row, they've never beaten you before. Is it still a rivalry? So yeah, I'll go on Twitter yeah. posting like, we shouldn't view this as a rivalry, guys. Like this doesn't make sense. But just the sheer amount of engagement we get from it is like, <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. maybe we can just keep it going. It's yeah. like it's so much of that. Like, and I again, my logical side of me knows, like Josh, like this account exists to bait you into engaging with it. And I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Come on. What if I? What if I just retweet him just one time? It's like you lost. Big nut six one four is harmless. Yeah, yeah. And, and then we run to the same thing as well with uh, now North Texas because the year that we were undefeated, mm. that was the team that ended up beating us. And so now the U- UTSA North Texas rivalry is starting to become kind of a thing, especially with them moving conferences with us. And so honestly, with that game, you get j- not as much as Texas State because of this proximity wise. Yeah. But like you see, I think the hatred between UTSA and UNT is so much stronger because it has, is actually a pretty close rivalry because it's not like, one team's blown out the team every time. Yeah, so, yeah. It's interesting. I guess going from uh, talking about the Robert pod more to like y'all's fan bases, I know uh, Michigan, obviously, a lot of news recently. And then mm. Ohio State fans, I know, are probably like drooling at what's going on, hoping to, to you know, take in. And JP being the Ohio State and Josh being the uh, Michigan guy, like, um, I guess, obviously today, you know, Harbo. Big news there. Um, Josh, I'll, I'll get started with you if you want to <laughs> dig deep <laughs> into your feelings. And I guess the, the future of Michigan, obviously you guys are wearing the crown and uh, most teams, even P5 teams, can only dream of that. But um, I guess having that bittersweet pill now of like the future of, of what Michigan football looks like, are you optimistic? How are you feeling right now? Yeah. So like, you know, I, I've told, I told uh, JP like banter aside, like obviously like I'm going to be disappointed because they're, you know, th- here's a guy that, that came in, you know, 
for those that that don't follow Michigan all that closely, like you know, Michigan is a traditional blue blood program, but from about you know, let's say two thousand seven, two thousand eight to twenty fourteen, like this was a dumpster fire. You know, you had you had the better part of a decade where this team was going three and nine, five and seven. Uh, you're you're s- squeaking by UConn and Akron. You got beat at home by Toledo. Like this was not a good program. Mm-hmm. Um, and so Harbaugh inherits this team in 2015, and immediately, you know, you see a nine win season. Mm-hmm. I think he strung together in his nine years there. I think I think they had at least six ten plus win seasons. So I mean. He took a team that was dead in the water and said, hey, I'm going to do my, my best to bring this back to the glory that everybody remembers, which, you know, at early 30s, like, I don't remember the 97 national title. You know, it's like I, I, mm-hmm. I, my dad had a poster of it in his office. Like, I don't remember that game. So to see him take the program for, from where it was and restore it, um, it it's – it's a wonderful thing. And so it's hard for me to, to fault him for say, for winning a national title for going 15 and Oh, you know, beating Ohio state, all those things. It's hard to fault him to say, okay, like I've done what I set out to do. And, and we've known for years, right? Like every off season was Harbaugh to the NFL rumors. And so like, we know that he's wanted to scratch that itch and go get a super bowl. Mm-hmm. N- now is if not now, when, and so, yeah. As disappointed as I am, like I, I don't think any true Michigan man harbors any sort of like frustration with that or anything like that. I think you can be annoyed with how it kind of, with maybe how it happened because it felt like we were doing this every off season. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I don't know how you could harbor any sort of ill will after what he after what he did. Right. Move. You know, moving moving forward, um, I expect. Uh, I know Ward Manuel, the AD, met with the team this week. Uh, today and said that he he hopes to have the coaching thing done by the end of the weekend, mm-hmm. which confirms what everybody has already assumed, which is Sharon Moore, the uh, offensive coordinator, uh, offensive line coach, is going to take over the reins. And it, what that looks like, honestly, is just anybody's guess. You know, mm-hmm. Brady Hoke looked like a home run hire for a year. Mm-hmm. Um, now, the other good thing about Sharon is that he's got relationships with a lot of these recruits. He's done a lot of the recruiting, um, back-to-back Joe Moore war- award winners. I mean, that's that's his, that those are his babies. Yeah. Um, somebody remarked that you've already passed the interview with, you know, showing up at Penn State, finding out you're the head coach 24 hours ahead of time, and getting the win there. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, you know, beating Ohio State is always going to be priority number one at Michigan, yeah. just like beating Michigan is at Ohio State. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I don't know how I don't know what else you could possibly want, yeah. um, especially because you want the guys that are there to stay to stay intact. You, you don't want to get poached the way Alabama has been poached. And so he, he if, if and when he's hired, he'll continue to run that same system um, that Michigan has been running what happens with the other guys with Jesse Minter and Jay Harbaugh and all that stuff remains to be seen what the quarterback room looks like by the time August rolls around, who knows? Mm -hmm. Um, But I I think if you're a Michigan fan, number one, I think you've got to keep sipping your champagne for now because Mm -hmm. you know, you you did it, you know, the off season as as much as Ohio state wants to hang an off season banner, congrats. Um, You know, (laughs) You can't let that take away while you're sipping on your champagne, right? Like the whole point of a good off season is to actually go win a title. Right. Um, so, so you've got to, you've got to just embrace that and worry about August when August gets here, because uh, I have, you know, this might be a shock. I have zero control over who starts at quarterback. <laughs> nobody, nobody has asked my opinion. Um, I cannot will, you know, Tom Brady to get another year of eligibility. So mm. anyway, that's, that's kind of my, my 30,000 foot overview as a fan is, I'm I'm disappointed, but I totally get it, and I yeah. I think Sharon's Sharon's the guy, and whether or not he he ends up being able to to keep up with the landscape of college football, that's that's anybody's guess, and we won't know that till it gets here. Yeah, JP being an Ohio State fan, uh, how are you feeling looking in? Yeah, Ohio State. I feel like hopes are high. I mean, it's it's. It, it says a lot about the culture of, of what that program is when realistically you lose one regular season game and everybody's talking about firing the head coach and is it <laughs> is the ship sinking and, oh, 
woe is me, what's going on? I mean, and I was part of that too. And I still am kind of in that strand where you are the problem. I look, I look at this season and I go, all right, Ryan day, this is it, man. Like Michigan, in my opinion, their offense isn't going to be close to what it was this past season. You're, you're not going to have hardball there. The defense for them will still be really good, but you have every single thing you need to win a natty for Ohio State this year. You've got all the right coaches. You've got an upgrade at quarterback, not a significant one, but I would still say an upgrade at quarterback. You have the best running back duo in the nation. You have a lot of potential, a lot of star potential at wide receiver. You've got um, – a top defense returning basically all of its key starters. This to me feels like a year that Columbus, Ohio has to be not only beat Michigan and, and Jason, I talked about it today, actually, it's not good enough. Now, even if Ryan day beats Michigan, they have to stomp Michigan. They've mm -hmm. got to go out and win a double digit win to satisfy that craving that Ohio state fans have had. And then it can't stop there. You've got to go in and you have to at least win a playoff game for it to feel like somewhat of a success. And honestly, even then, I don't know if because of what the past three years, and I guess it depends on how Ohio State, if they were to lose, would lose. Because the past two seasons, in crucial games, it has felt like Ryan Day's outcoached himself. I would say there were numerous times in the Michigan game where he overthought things. And I think to Sharon Moore's credit, he didn't make those mistakes. And I, and we've talked about it on the podcast, Jason, I've said it numerous times. That was the difference in the Michigan OSU game this year was the coaching decisions. Mm -hmm. so we were out coached by Sharon Moore, who wasn't even the a regular head coach. Then last year, when you're going against uh, Georgia, you have a chance numerous times to put the game away, all the momentum in your favor, and you blew it. To me, that Ryan Day cost them a natty in 2022 based solely off that. I think they would have won that game. They would have went on to take care of TCU. We wouldn't even be having this discussion right now. <laughs> but he's had a bad a bad case of the James Franklins where he just out coaches himself <laughs> in the worst moment. And, and so there's that part of me that I look at this team and I go, there's just no – I've never been more convinced that an Ohio team, State team should beat Michigan. But the fact that I think that worries the heck out of me because I've seen Ryan Day crumble in big moments – and I'm just, if that happens again, I can no longer stand behind him and defend it. He He's going to have to be replaced. So it's a an exciting year, but also an extremely nervous one because I don't want to be in a coaching search for anybody. Um, but there's a lot of excitement. I mean, the transfer portal guys that they got, the recruiting class, you're having Jeremiah Smith, the number one recruit coming in. People are talking about him being a, a true freshman starter. You've got Julian Sane that just transferred from Alabama that was the number uh, a five-star, one of the top quarterback recruits for this class. You have um, Caleb Downs from Alabama, arguably their best defensive player from last year's team coming in, already returning a bunch of guys on defense. You have the running back duo of Travion Henderson and then uh, Judkins from Ole Miss transferring in. I mean, it's just top to bottom, the talent is there. And yeah. so I'm ready for it to be football season already. I don't know. I've watched – uh, like every single possible replay highlight you possibly could. So I could send you a couple you probably haven't been watching. No, that's all right. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. My question is being so what the Big Ten was before all the new teams are coming in. Like, do you think, I guess specifically for Ryan Day, like, was there that pressure to beat Michigan even more? Because with the Big Ten, it's pretty much that game comes down to who's going to win the Big Ten. You have Penn State every once in a while, but normally it's whoever wins that the big game is the one that wins the conference. So do you think even for both coaches before uh, Harbaugh won the national championship, was there more pressure on that game more than ever? Because it's kind of like, Hey, this is pretty much the conference championship yeah. game. Yeah, I think so. And I think that's going to be interesting to see how that develops because I think there's, I don't think it's super likely, but there's a chance if, if Ohio state and Michigan are both good, that they could play three times in a season, which mm -hmm. would just be it. I don't know if it destroys the rivalry or not because that game is such a a sacred day in Michigan yeah. and in Columbus uh, and Ohio, honestly, that it's like any minor thing that change will change it drastically. And so mm -hmm. you look at it now, and you're right. You look next year, and you go, well, with all these teams, even if Ohio State drops that, it doesn't really matter. If Michigan mm -hmm. drops it, it doesn't really matter. And so I'll be curious to see if that actually impacts like fans and players getting up for it. I would hope not. Cause I feel like 
it's like I said at the very beginning of this, when you're raised in Ohio, and I'm sure Jace feels this way with Michigan, like you hate that team. Mm -hmm. and, and it is taught to you in school that you hate yes. that team. And so even if you're not an alumni of that school, you are taught that Michigan sucks. You cross out all your M's yeah. and that's just the way life is. Yeah, yeah, I think I, that's something, the crossing out the M's thing is something yeah. I've never, like, that is just another is, level of hatred for a single school. <laughs> it well, is the whole that, thing in Columbus. They cross out every single M all across <laughs> the city. The beautiful thing is that ju in just about any social media post where they're trying to cross out an M, you can almost always find one because they're not that smart. <laughs> it's, it, I mean, it, it's a, it's a public education. It is what it is. Um, you know, but I, I will say, I will say like, I, the, in, yeah, the interesting piece of, of the new big 10 is, yeah. Like the, the loser of one, like the winner of that game doesn't that automatically win the Big Ten anymore because mm -hmm. you don't automatically get the bid to go play Iowa, you know? Yeah, um, exactly. And I know, I know Deacon Hill is a heck of a quarterback, but he's not. Um, yeah. You know, I, I don't know that it changes, even if you end up playing the game a second time, you know, whether it's in the playoffs or whatever. I don't think that it diminishes it at all. Like, I don't personally love it because I know that, like, my heart condition is going to flare up um, and by and by my heart condition i mean i will develop a heart condition and it will flare up um you know but th the interesting piece of it is i don't think it diminishes it but you know it, it, it it's just such it's such a weird thing to try to explain to somebody that's outside the rivalry because you could you know in theory sure you could lose the first time you play and then beat the other team in the playoff yeah, like that, that would, in that sense, the first one doesn't matter. And that's, that's fair. But the danger there is that, you know, let's say, let's say Ohio State beats Michigan in the fall and, uh, but Michigan makes the playoff and goes on to win another national championship. Do you feel good as Michigan? Yes and no. Because, and, and this is the bizarre thing the number one game on the schedule is not mm -hmm. the national championship mm -hmm. game. It is, did you beat Ohio State? Mm -hmm. Did yeah. you beat that team up north? And, and that is such a – that makes no sense to anybody outside of that rivalry. But it's it's true. This Like, I was so much more nervous for the Ohio State game than I was the national title. I was so much more nervous for the Ohio State game than the Rose Bowl. Like, I was – don't get me wrong. I was so dry heaving in my living room like an idiot. But, like, <laughs> but it just the, the – the, and some of it's living in Columbus, but the pressure of I don't want to have to hear about this for another 365 days. Like <laughs> – and again, you can take that too far and, you know, we've all have social media, but like in its rightful place where that can be a fun bit of banter, like that's, that's a blast. Like you don't have the, as good as the NFL rivalries are, you don't have that with Bears yeah. Packers, you know, yeah. you just don't. When and that's like, kind of, oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, go I guess ahead. kind of the big, biggest thing for me, it's just like saying, talking about college football versus NFL football. Like I, I, I like watching NFL football, not really right now because I'm a Cowboys fan. So <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's a little rough right now. But, like, the passion in college football, not only from a player perspective and a school perspective, but a fan perspective, like, people have so much passion for college football. Like, yeah. your alma mater, even if you didn't go to that school, the passion you have for your college team, I think, outweighs any NFL team's passion. And I and that's why, you know, and, and JP and I have talked about this, like, whether you're, you know, a roadrunner or a Buckeye Wolverine, like you, you, most of us fell in love with football, especially college football at like a really early age, right? Like, mm -hmm. like I can remember, you know, I, I won't go on this, but like I, I know that my love of it comes from my dad, you know, mm -hmm. where, you know, even when, you know, even though I didn't, he went out and saw Michigan win, you know, their 97, 98 national title. Mm -hmm. All I knew was like, hey, like it's a new, it's New Year's. Where the heck is dad? It's like, oh, he's in California. Okay, well, can I stay up late then? You know, like that's all I remember, yeah. right? And and so now to get to kind of see that, especially this year for me was special. Like to watch that come full circle. Here's Michigan mm -hmm. in the Rose Bowl again. They've got the old school shoulder patch. Like, yeah. you know, I was five when that happened. I've got a five year old. You know, like stuff like that. I'm like, yeah. oh, this, this is why we love this thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and again, everything in its proper place and perspective. You can take it too far, but that's why you know that's why we love the rivalry. Is it's 
you know, it's fun to, to banter back and forth with people. It's fun to wear your Michigan yeah. stuff to Meyer and have some, I literally held the door for somebody at Meyer the other day. She went, Oh, Michigan. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I'm trying to be a good human. Uh, like, but, but not, it, not that's, the, that's the stuff that we, you just have to love it though. It's just good yeah. stuff. So when you guys go to a game, Ohio State, Michigan, what's the seating arrangement look like? Are you guys sitting on opposite ends no. of the field? Are you guys wearing like kind of, uh, you know, middle of the field colors or what's it look like? Here's here's the thing about that, because I saw I saw that you were going to ask us that. And I just laughed because we had <laughs> this was the first year we had that situation even be a possibility hmm. where Michigan gave us credentials to go to the game up in Ann Arbor. And we talked, I mean, Jake and I never had serious conversations. We had to close my office door and have like a serious sit down conversation where it was, okay, here are five different guidelines of if we go to this game together. And it was, there is no trash talking on the way up. There's no, regardless of the winner, we will not reference the game at all. We will not listen to the radio about it. We'll put on another college football game. We will not – no trash talking. You will not say a word to me. We talked, about, we talked All about not even out. riding together. We yeah, talked we about talked driving about, separate vehicles. We talked about driving separately. <laughs> and ultimately, wow. I decided – ultimately, I decided that game – and Jason put it perfectly. Like, that game is – for a hardcore fan, is – it's indescribable. The amount of nerves that you feel, even when you're – you have you've never touched a field as a player at all. You have no relation. It doesn't ultimately impact you, but you think it does, and it will kill you if they lose. And so I stayed my butt at home, and I sat on my couch with the door locked, and I, <laughs> I, I told my wife I am unreachable for the next couple of hours. My dog, I didn't even let, like, sit in there with me. I closed myself off to the world. I put my phone face down, and I was just – I was out for the next couple of hours just locked in, and I – I couldn't do it because I thought they're either I'm going to go, I'm going to go to Ann Arbor and Ohio state's going to win. And I'm not going to be able to talk all that trash, which is going to kill <laughs> me. Or I'm going to have to walk through because where we park at Ann Arbor is like a couple mile walk from the stadium. So I have to get there, walk through all those stupid fans, get to the stadium, <laughs> sit there with all those stupid fans. That's media in a working press box, which Jace will tell you, even at Ohio State home games and blowouts, I have the hardest time doing. You are the least <laughs> professional person. I, I am not professional at all. I, I'm sitting back there, and they're scoring, and I have to, like, stand up, and I'm like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> it's getting so pumped. And so I thought, I can't sit up there in that in that game with all that it holds and not cheer, not be able to cheer. And then if Ohio State loses, have to ride – with traffic a three and a half to four hour car ride back with him wanting to gloat so i thought <laughs> he can go and experience that i will sit at home and i will just enjoy it and try and keep as much of the peace as i could so <laughs> the answer is we can't go to a game together because it's one of us will die i mean hey kudos to you guys for even being able to do a podcast together because i think if uh if we had like a co-host who was a texas state fan like i don't know how it would work even when we're not playing like you know, I think there would just be too much trash talk going on. And, you know, underneath the skin, you're like, why is this guy here? I don't want to be talking to him. <laughs> so that, yeah. that, that's cool. Well, Josh, do you feel the same? Or? Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the amazing thing was, like, because we were, like, we were legitimately sitting there going, is it dumb to take two cars to the same place? And, we're, and I'm, like, voicing this out loud to my wife. And she just looks at me and she's like, you boys got to grow up and she's absolute. <laughs> she's absolutely right. And yeah, I said, yeah. yes, you're, yes, I love you. You're absolutely right. Anyway, do you think we could take two cars? <laughs> <to the stadium? laughs> but it, it is though. And like, and again, that's, I, I couldn't do it with everybody, but like, that's where JP and I like, because we're like actual friends, like we can jab each other. And again, my big thing is like, it kind of goes back to the social media thing. Like if I have like an actual like relationship with you of in some way, like then, then it's fine. Cause I know we're both like, we both know where each other's lines are. Mm -hmm. Like we're not going to cross it. We know better than to text each other during a game. Even if we're not playing each other, like I'm not going to trash talk him if they lose to Notre Dame or whatever, mm -hmm. but like for just, for it just to be some random person. No. And the idea of like, even this year, like the idea of going to Col into Columbus for that game 
I think you phrased it, JP, as like being surrounded by those people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah, like, it's, there's just, there's just some, it's hard to turn down. It's yeah. hard to turn down, but also it, it kind of comes full circle back to like, would I enjoy this? Like, cause again, the second it's not fun, I'm out. So if I go, right. yeah, I could go to this and be just friggin' miserable. That's not worth it to me. I'd rather sit in my home. Yeah. Well, and what's mm -hmm. crazy and you guys get it with rivalry games too, is like that game isn't fun for me anyways because it's so mentally exhausting because you're yeah. so stressed leading up to it all week because it is it's a holiday in ohio i mean it's that's what, when it is game week that's what everybody focuses on and so you go into that all week long you're stressed especially when both teams are as talented as they have been and so yeah. you go into that game and by the time it's done win or loss like you are just physically drained yeah and so <laughs> knowing in the back of my mind like even if they win I'm I'm not gonna want to be in a car for hours. Just stuck. <laughs> I want to. I'm gonna go take a nap, and I'm well, gonna go you, get some garbage and you, food, and that's it. You made a great decision too, because I absolutely stopped at the M Den on the way out and bought you know, you everybody shirt, and I would have made you wait in line with me. I would have <laughs> said have anything. Been. I wouldn't have said yeah. anything, but you would the have had to walk by that shirt. We uh we drive. I drive my car every time we've gone to Ann Arbor, so I would have just left you, and that would have been fine. <laughs> or you would have had to bail me out of jail because some Michigan fan would have said something, not a stalker. So it, it would have not ended well. I, well, I guess what uh, Josh is saying, going back to kind of not texting each other during games, so I guess whenever y'all go to, say, go to a Michigan game where they're not playing Ohio State or go to an Ohio State game where they're not playing Michigan, is there still, like, are you still not, like, you're rooting for the other team to win, or is it just like a you're just kind of there to watch college football? I think I think it's both. Like, like when we any any time that Ohio State's playing a game, right? Like my second favorite team is whoever they're playing, right? So like, so like there's there's like there's absolutely that. There's no doubt about it. But it's it's also just a very such a different um, it's just a different way to watch it because again, like mm -hmm. we're both we are both I don't know rational is maybe the word because we're both rational fans, like we're just, we're such fans of the sport that, you yeah. know, e even, even for me, you know, being, you know, being on the field or in the press box or whatever for a big Ohio state game, even though I'm pulling for, you know, whoever they're playing, uh, mm. Youngstown state made it seven to seven at one point. I'm like, Oh, let's go pens. Okay. <laughs> uh, you know, mm. but to be able to just take in the atmosphere is yeah. just spectacular. Cause, cause again, there's a section of the fan base that's just going to troll and will say nothing positive about Michigan, nothing positive about Ohio State. It's like, listen, you've got a hundred thousand people crammed in here. This is mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. Like yeah. I don't like it doesn't matter, you know. Notre Dame Stadium. Yeah, I want Notre Dame to win. I mean, I didn't want Notre Dame to lose. That's about as far as I can get <laughs> with them. You know, yeah. I'm just like, but it did it doesn't matter. Like this is this is a cathedral of college football. This is awesome. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So yes to both. It, it, you you end up going when it's not your team. You go into fan mode for sure, and it, it is. It's just trying to take nothing for granted and just soak it all in because this is this is why any of us do what we do. Is that no. this is it's not meant to be ultimate, but it it can be fun. So just soak it up for all it's worth. Yeah, and it's it's one of those things too. Like from an Ohio State fan, I mean, you go and this year we went to Bowling Green at Michigan under the lights. Uh, they had just put in what new like new a new, scoreboards, light new, play, new scoreboard stuff and i was on the field for that and i mean i'm walking through the tunnel the only tunnel in the entire arena uh and i'm going through there and jj mccarthy walks right by me and i snap a picture of him walking up send it to jason i'm like freaking out like man these you're up close to some of these guys that you know i mean we're five feet away from marvin harrison on the sidelines mm -hmm. for games we're i'm Five feet away, Blake Corm is running by me during warm-ups. Donovan Edwards is walking out the tunnel. J.J. McCarthy's five feet away doing warm-ups, sitting at the end zone, uh, meditating before the, the game starts. And, I mean, all these things where you're watching these guys knowing they're going to be playing on Sundays, making millions of dollars, and people are going to be paying hundreds of dollars to go see them. And here we are out of Columbus, Ohio, a, a tiny little podcast, and I'm being able to cover these guys under, under a credential and it's moments like that where you take a step back and I mean that Michigan game was one for me where I'm sitting there and I'm watching 110,000 people pack the stands for Bowling Green who yeah. couldn't beat their way out of a wet paper bag and I'm, I'm, I'm watching them but I'm seeing all these future NFL stars come mm -hmm. running out and just being able to take that all in and seeing 
I mean, as much as I love that song and hate it, like hearing Mr. Brightside under the lights in a, a beautiful, yeah. like crisp day is mm -hmm. it's, there's nothing like it. This is yeah. life giving to me to hear you say all this. <laughs> Thank you. I, can't, as, I hate that it's their thing, but it's a bop, man. Yeah. It's a good song. And so, I, me, yeah, go so for me, I I'm, I go to UTSA. I'm a diehard UTSA fan, but I grew up a Texas fan. That's that's why I was raised on college football is Texas. And so my buddy got me, me and him got to go see the Texas K State game this past oh, season. Nice. And it was a ranked matchup, and so I get that feeling of like, hey, like. This is just going to be fun football to watch. It was a sold out game, ranked matchup. Like it, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, like I, I want one team to win, but it's like just being able to watch that happen live is just like, it's there's nothing better. It's special, man. It really is. Yeah. I think that kind of segues uh, into our last question, which is um, obviously, you know, past couple of years, lots of huge changes in the college football environment, NCAA the advent of the NIL deals. Um, a lot of people are wondering, you know, what that's going to look like over the next five, 10 years, especially when you have teams or, or leagues like the Pac-12 that, you know, have been big legacy leagues for, for the past few decades, all of a sudden, you know, overnight basically liquidating. Um, how do you guys see college football evolving? Is it going to a good place? Because for me at least, you know, obviously us being a smaller team and, and a smaller conference looking in, there's always sort of that worry of, okay, are we going to end up in a zone where it's like yeah. a Premier League and then you have the lower leagues? Mm -hmm. And with the Premier League, maybe it's just, you know, just two, you know, two basically almost like an AFC, NFC kind of situation where you've yeah. got like the SEC and the big and then everyone else um, and how that's going to obviously also affect rivalries, right? Because like you guys mentioned, like, you know, it doesn't matter if you've um, been really competitive with another team. If you have a, a long lasting rivalry, you could beat them five times in a row. You're still going to be just that much invested the next time they play. Um, I guess for you guys, obviously, you know, Bama lost Saban, now Michigan. Um, and now with the NIL stuff, everyone's always worried about, okay, you got these players who are going to jump really easily if they get a new check. Um, how do you all see the overall college football uh, environment changing over the next few years? Are we headed in a good direction? Or do you think there needs to be like some regulations and stuff put in place to, I guess, keep us from going to this kind of pro type environment where you've only got two, uh, two conferences battling it out? Yeah, I, I think you, you know, I think it's hard to say, well, okay, like do, do these three things and, and that'll fix it. But I, I, I would be hard pressed to find somebody who says we don't need better regulation on NIL. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I think, and I've not, I've not thought of it from the really from the perspective of like a mid major, but, but I think that's a fantastic point is it's one thing for me to say, Hey, like the, the NIL stuff where, you know, hey, now I'm concerned, you know, our, our coach is taking the NFL job. Now I'm concerned that, you know, guys are going to get lured out of the out of the team and completely yeah. just, you know, d d destroy the, the roster. Um, but that like that's one bit of it. But I think that I think you're raising some great points of there's a difference between players should be paid for their name, image and likeness. Absolutely. They should 100 mm -hmm. percent. No question. But what regulations are around there to to prevent, like you said, kind of a a, a relegation style type thing? Because I don't think that's good for the sport. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and I, I think too, and you hit on this too, Jeremy, the, the the protection of of rivalries is such a big thing. And again, we're not worried about it on our end with you know, Michigan's going to play Ohio State every year. The mm -hmm. money talks. I mean, it's just yeah. it, 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 yeah. they're going to play. But when you when you look at you know some of the teams coming in from the Pac-12, like will Oregon play Oregon State every year? Still, yeah. mm -hmm. will Oregon play Washington, Texas, and Oklahoma? I, yeah. I mean, stuff like that. That I go, at some point, we're sacrificing. I won't say the integrity of the sport, but we're sacrificing a huge chunk of why we love this sport. Mm -hmm. Things like you know Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, Bedlam. It's yeah. a great example. I lived in Stillwater for a couple of years. Like yeah. Bedlam is life. Yeah. And mm -hmm. to move away from something like that, th that is that is not that in and of itself is not a good direction for the sport. So mm -hmm. the specifics on how do you regulate and whatever, I don't make nearly enough money to figure out. But mm -hmm. there, there's no doubt that I think the protecting those rivalries, especially those regional rivalries, has to be priority one. I think making sure that it doesn't become a relegation type thing is priority too. And I think with that too, you've also got to remember, and, and, you know, uh, David, you know, you can probably attest to this too. Like these are student athletes. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, like 
the idea that Michigan, you know, next year is going to fly out to Washington for a game. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. that's a big ask to mm-hmm. have Washington every other week flying to friggin Lincoln, Nebraska. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. you know, that's, that's a big, like, that's a big deal. Um, we saw this in, I'm a big, I'm a big college hockey guy. Um, mm-hmm. And so like, we saw this in the, uh, the CCHA when Alaska Fairbanks was part of the conference. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I grew up in, in, on Lake Superior. So Lake Superior state is, is the school that I grew up with in my hometown. And so Alaska Fairbanks, you know, these student athletes up North are making trips down to Alabama Huntsville. They're making <laughs> trips to, to, you know, to Minneapolis. I'm like, how are they supposed to do this? Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, anyway, that's, you know, that's, that's some of the, the concerns I have. So I think yeah. are we moving in a good direction? Yes. In the sense of players being paid for NIL, because that mm. should happen, yeah. but no, in the sense of, I, I wonder if it's moving too fast for us to regulate it properly. I don't know, JP, how how you would answer that. But that, that yeah, would be start. I mean, there's not much more to add than what you guys said. I think you're seeing a prime example this off season of stuff. I mean, it's easy for me. I love the transfer portal this year because it's brought Ohio State a ton of good players. <laughs> um, and but you, I think it's also, I mean, they're kind of the problem too. Of you look at this and there's rumors that they've spent around 13 million, and you've got their NIL collective that's going and that's the nature of what the NIL is going to bring about is all these big name schools that have huge alumni following. And you're seeing guys like CJ Stroud go into the NFL and then put his own money back into it. And you're essentially going to have all these professional athletes that used to go to your school that are going to end up funding your stuff to help you keep players. And it's going to knock out the smaller guys out even in the big 10 where those smaller schools that aren't as, as attractive as a Michigan or a Penn state, or a USC and all those all those big name schools are going to suffer because even their best players, it's going to be like the way I kind of look at it is like a JUCO to a Division One. You're going to have all these smaller schools that their best players, yeah, it's D D one, but they're wanting to go to the USCs and they're wanting to go to yeah. a school in the SEC. So once they start performing, how can these smaller schools keep those guys and continue to build? Because the money talks, like Jay said, other big schools are going to come out. The Alabamas are going to come out and say, well, here, we'll give you $4 million to come play for us so you don't have to go play yeah. at uh, Illinois next year. And yeah. there they go, because what else are you going to do as a college kid? I mean, right. you look at Kyle McCord, and he wanted more NIL money, which was one of the reasons he decided to transfer. That and he's soft. But <laughs> <laughs> that's one of the things. Okay. You look at him and you go, it makes sense. You 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 weren't going to go into a quarterback battle. You were going to go to the highest bidder, and that's just the name of the game now. Yeah. So I agree. It nil has to exist. I don't know if I have an answer on how you fix it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's a really loaded question for sure. And I mm-hmm. think uh, you know it'll be interesting to see. I think for me at least, like my my interest in, in what's going to happen is really based on I think for some people and I'm sure a lot of this is is really circulating within like sort of the television and ESPN headquarters they're obviously calling a lot of these shots but it's just the fact that you know when you have a college football team like all the players even if you're in a Michigan or Alabama like all these players are not going to be playing on Sunday like these are like you said student athletes and at the end of the day if you do concentrate it to a league where you only have uh, a, a certain amount of teams like are there even enough players now to yeah. create an environment that's really entertaining or are you going to essentially just have this like you know 100 or 200 whatever amount of players that okay these are the guys that we're going to focus on from freshman to senior year and the rest of the guys can go kick rocks you know at a bottom mm-hmm. league and hope to get in um it's definitely gonna be an interesting time and i think at the end of the day for us being you know college football fans it's going to be interesting to see how that evolves because at the end of the day like like david said right like there's just a completely different environment when you're in college football i think with the advent of nil obviously money is a factor now but i think initially what got me into college football and attracted me to it is like a lot of these players are playing for the love of the game they're playing because you know they love their team their college and all of a sudden when you start dropping millions and millions of dollars like how is it going to look especially when you've got a freshman guy who's 17 18 years old you're giving him one million two million dollar contract if he doesn't perform the way you think he's going to perform how is that going to affect things later on because yeah. when you're in the nfl you've got a lot of proven track record at the higher levels you can make a much more educated guess so definitely it's going to be um really really interesting to see but guys really glad to have you on obviously uh, a little over 45 minutes but uh it was really nice talking to you guys um what are the best ways that people can follow the uh the robbery pod is it on twitter youtube 
Yeah, tw- Twitter, YouTube, and uh, and Instagram. It's all at RiflePod. Try and keep it real simple. Just at RiflePod, and then you'll see you'll see you know you can see our ha- our personal handles on the screen as well. And and uh, we here's the beautiful thing: it's like we can just retweet ourselves from the RiflePod account too, and be like, oh, look at what this brilliant what this brilliant journalist said. And it's just me retweeting yeah. a meme that I made. And that's what. <laughs> Hey, you guys heard it here. If you want to troll Ohio State and Michigan, <laughs> you guys know where to go. <laughs> but, hey, it was great having you guys on. We really appreciate it. Um, thanks to you all for listening. Uh, next week we'll have a uh, college football campus tour. The guy himself will be on campus and uh, going over, maybe give us a review of the Alma Dome. Uh, we hope to see you guys then. But, meanwhile, take care. We'll talk to you guys later.